As you may have seen, I've been stockpiling some new Zoom F6 video ideas and really just making them quick bite-sized pieces so you guys can look for something specific and uh, get your information pretty quick. So I'm doing my best to inform you guys on these things. And before we start this video, I want you to know that if you have any ideas that I haven't covered yet about the Zoom F6 or some things that I've covered in the past, but basically the Zoom F6 because I'd like to think I'm the Zoom F6 guy on YouTube, which maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe if I get a, a little bit of a plaque. Someone make me a plaque. Zoom F6 guy. If Zoom watches this, just make me it, please. I really appreciate that. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Zoom F6 and the auto mix functionality. Now, you may be wondering what the hell it is and wonder what am I going to utilize this for? What can I gain from this? And it's one of those things that you don't need it. It's not something that it's utilized by people that would be buying this, in my opinion. In my opinion, people who buy this device are working audio people and going out using boom mics and uh, just going out and recording audio for a professional gig. Of course, if you're doing this for a YouTube channel and you're successful or if you're a person who is really into gear and you just want it, that's another type of thing. But for the most part, these are for professional people. These field recorders are professional are for professional people. Field recorder essentially means professional, but not necessarily nowadays because they're more affordable, especially the Zoom F6. So, auto mix, what does that mean? Well, according to the manual here, and we'll talk about what they say in the manual right now. When using multiple mics to capture audio during a meeting, for example, automatically attenuating the inputs of mics that are not in active use provides the following benefits. The likelihood of feedback is reduced. Background noise includes fans and crowds in suppressed to certain level regardless of the number of people. Sound quality degradation due to phase differences caused by variations in the distances of multiple mics is reduced. Now, there's a lot of information a lot of fancy talk, but basically, from what I've gained from it, it's essentially like a noise gate acting as a threshold in which once the audio source, mostly talking, gets to a certain point, it starts engaging again. The, the level is engaging, and that's what a noise gate is. And basically, if you don't know what a noise gate is, you set a threshold, meaning that anything below, let's say, negative 45 decibels is cut off. And then once the level reaches above that, it starts to record or starts to read it again and listen to it, essentially. Now, of course, if you do a hard gate, which a lot of people don't like the hard gate, but there are useful things for it. Like if you're using drum kits, drum kits are huge with noise gates because you can manipulate how much splash you want out of that. Everyone knows like the differences between snare drums from the 80s, the 70s, the 90s, and even 2000s when it came a little more tighter. Uh, obviously, you know that concept. And the best way that I learned how to use a noise gate was with drum sets. With vocals and things that are a little bit more fluent are a little more hard to use. So auto mix basically means any outside noise that is outside of that limit, which just so you know, I'm going to preface this. I haven't found a adjustment for it. There's no adjustment for the threshold, at least as far as I know. So whatever the preloaded threshold is, is what you're going to have to deal with. And I've tested it a little bit and I will be doing a test at the end of this video, but I really don't see the use for it unless you're like a one person show and you're in need of something reliable like that. But 
I really don't see the use for it. For the most part, I don't think people who are buying this are going to be utilizing this function. At least in my opinion, if you have the Zoom F6 or if you're planning on getting something like this, would you use it? Maybe, yes, no, let me know down in the comments, we'll talk about it. Now, the next thing I'm gonna get into is why would you need this? And I kind of touched on this a little bit, so let's go into it. Now, as I said before, for an audio recordist and someone who's monitoring the audio levels and setting up the mics to a point where you don't have to worry about these things like bleeding effects and things like that, you're probably not gonna use this. This is for people who are, let's set up the mics in a podcast setting or in uh, just put it on a mic stand and do an interview style and not have to worry about it. So some of the things that they were saying before, mic bleed and things like that, if you angle your microphones properly, use those dead zones, those off axis stuff. So if you have like hypercardioid or cardioid, you can uh, play around with those and see if you can find the sweet spot of rejection. Now to some restrictions, and I could be wrong about these, but in my tests, I noticed a couple of these things. The limiter cannot be set on in parentheses advanced if auto mix is on or ambisonic format is not set to off. So basically you can't use the limiter if those things are on. Keep that in mind. Another thing, sample rate can't be 192, which if you're recording something like that at 192, you're probably not in need of this. You're probably someone who's really good at audio recording and you're probably doing like samples of, I don't know, sound design, Foley work, all that stuff, which I plan on doing more videos on. And if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments. We'll talk about it, talk about different sources we could do, different things we could play with and uh, just have fun. Next thing, the ambisonic format cannot be set to any value other than off. So basically you can't use auto mix when ambisonic. Ambisonic is basically like surround sound, like 360 audio. Now, the last thing that they have here is when monitoring sounds being recorded with a mic in real time, increased latency can cause interference between the sound being recorded that is transmitted through the air and the delay monitored sound, possibly making accurate monitoring difficult. So basically, if you're monitoring this in real time, the latency could be a problem. There could be latency with how it's being picked up. I don't see myself using it if I'm monitoring it. If you're monitoring this, you know that you could hear it and you could adjust your mics and adjust your things accordingly. So now that we know what auto mix is and what it does and the things that go around with it, let's do a couple of tests. And uh, after the test, I'm going to give you my impressions on those audio samples and see how it went. Okay, so here's a quick test with the auto mix on. I have track one and track two engaged with the auto mix. And what I'm noticing here is obviously the other microphone is picking up my voice and everything that I'm making, every sound that I make. But the thing is, if I be quiet for a little bit, you notice that the fan on my computer is not being picked up. And that's roughly about a foot to two feet away from both these microphones. Now the next test I'm going to do is basically see where that threshold is. Meaning that it's only, like I said before, it's like a noise gate. It's something that is a threshold that it doesn't allow certain decibels in, like a certain amount of decibels in. So let's see what it is. So I'm looking at the, the the meters here and I'm noticing that when I'm just moving my hand on my pants, it didn't really make that much of a difference. I don't think it peaked or gave any decibels. So there's a couple of examples with two dynamic microphones, very simple podcast setting. Uh, I think right now what I want to do is let's try it with two condenser microphones and see if you notice a difference. All right, so we have two condenser microphones angled in a way that I would have two people talking into them. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it's the best I can do right now. AT2035 and the AT2020, just for context. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is the same thing I did before. A little bit of quiet test, a little bit of uh, distance test, see how these things react. And obviously, they're more sensitive. 
Uh, they are recording at the same level, meaning that they're right around negative 12 to negative 6, but they are condenser microphones, more sensitive, probably going to hear more sound. So let's be quiet for a little bit. All right, so what I did notice is the mini fridge is going on and the fan on my laptop is going on and it didn't really peak until little things here and there maybe a click or whatever it is so there is a threshold there that works for a lot of different types of microphones so there's a couple of examples for you a couple of different types of microphones and different scenarios that you may encounter i do feel that this is best for a podcast setting meaning that having a microphone right up in your face and the signal to noise ratio not being too crazy uh, I do definitely think that it's a useful thing in a specific situation. I watched a video a while back when the Zoom F6 came out, and they were talking about the auto mix functionality and how it eases into the next time the signal comes into play. So right now the, the auto mix is off, and I did some tests and I did a bunch of tests and I really don't notice that much of a difference. It does act like a noise gate and the attenuated signal is nice, but you could always do that in post. And for a person that's getting the Zoom F6, this might not be useful for you. And for someone who may like the Zoom F6 and might not have as much experience, this could be useful. Just got to play around with it and have a open mind about it because I tried it. It wasn't for me, but doesn't mean that it's not for everybody. One more thing, you might be wondering why I didn't show you guys how to turn auto mix on. Well, I have a YouTube short out right now, so you guys can check that out. It's short, it's easy, it's a couple of steps, and I really wanna have a line of little tips and tricks in my YouTube shorts to help you guys out. It also gets out to more people, so maybe that it uh, promotes the channel a little more as well. I'm trying to play around with that. So if you have any ideas for YouTube shorts, let me know down in the comments. That all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Helps this video, helps this channel, and really does get out to more people and does that whole YouTube algorithm thing to promote the channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever based on the Zoom F6, based on Automix, based on anything whatsoever, down in the comments, all I ask is that you be nice, kind, constructive, and all that kind of stuff. Also, if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It'd be greatly appreciated. It definitely is uh, nice to see this community grow. Speaking of the community and the subscribers, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, which is really cool. So please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to know when I go live and new videos come out, all that stuff. So if you wanna ask me questions directly, I stream on this channel occasionally, trying to get a good schedule going, but it's tough right now. So if you have notification bell on, you'll know exactly when I go live. I think I'm almost positive I'm gonna do a Halloween stream. So keep an eye out for that on Halloween. I'll, you'll know, you'll see me post some type of thing. I'll, I'll keep you in the loop. And that's all I got for you today. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. You guys won't let me get the coins. Dirty bastards want all the coins for the ghostly sales. <laughs>